We are gonna kick things off with this meal prep. We've got breakfast, in fact, we've got two breakfast ideas because I love breakfast, I'm such a breakfast woman. We've got lunch and we've got dinner. This is a non-restrictive food that you actually enjoy, that you actually want to eat, that actually tastes good. Healthy, balanced, meal prep all of the recipes can be found in the description of this video i would love to hear from you in the comments let me know what you think of this style of video let me know if it's helpful if you want to see more so we're going to start with a little bit of pre-prep this is just going to make the whole process of this meal prep a lot smoother a lot more efficient so for our pre-prep i'm just going to let the quinoa soak at least for half an hour ideally for an hour but at least for half an hour i feel like it makes a difference once it gets cooked um if you're using pre-bought and cooked quinoa perfect obviously you can skip this step so i would actually advise you to use thighs for this meal prep unfortunately i could only find breasts so that's what i used so i seasoned up the chicken with some salt some garlic powder i placed in some cumin powder some dried oregano and a pre-made jerk seasoning powder which i had i also placed over some olive oil some black pepper mixed in a little bit of greek yogurt this can be left out if you are dairy free that is absolutely fine i made sure all of the chicken was seasoned and coated well before covering and placing this bowl into the fridge if you're cooking it straight away you don't have time for it to sit do your thing that is absolutely fine to utilize and to be as efficient as possible with our time we're also going to chop up the butternut squash and we're going to put it to roast so i just chopped it into quite small cubes because it will roast a lot quicker and i placed it on a baking sheet with some salt some pepper some olive oil very simple and i placed it into a 200 degree oven and i left it in there for about 25 to 30 minutes this is going to be for our quinoa dish that we're going to prep shortly so starting off with our first breakfast option this is first of the two breakfast options that i'm sharing this is our kale and herb frittata inspired by a persian dish called cuckoo sabzi i have kind of like tweaked it and left some ingredients out swapped some ingredients so it's definitely not cuckoo sabzi just wanted to make it clear that it is definitely in inspired by one. So we're going to start off by finely chopping up our kale and then finely chopping up our spring onions. We're going to grab a pan and we're going to heat a little bit of olive oil on like a low to medium heat. We're then going to place in our spring onions followed on by the cooked kale and we're just going to cook everything down. We're going to season with some salt and some pepper. So once the kale has softened we're going to switch the heat off and we're just going to set the pan aside and let everything cool down. So whilst the kale is cooling down we're going to chop up our fresh herbs. This is where you can really use any fresh herbs that you have on hand that you enjoy the taste of so i'm using some parsley and some dill we're then going to crack our eggs into a large bowl we're going to add in some salt and some pepper before adding in some baking powder some yogurt i'm using some greek yogurt if you want you can use a dairy-free yogurt or you can just keep the yogurt out um, and then we're going to place in our fresh herbs followed on by that cooled down cow into a greased or lined tin we're going to place in our mixture so we're gonna place the kale and herb frittata into a preheated oven of 180 degrees. We wanna keep it in there for about 35 to 40 minutes, maybe a little bit longer, just depending on the size of the eggs that you're using, the size of the tin that you're using. You can poke a knife through it. If there is like runny egg mixture, then it definitely needs a little bit longer. So yeah, you can go ahead and remove your kale and her frittata once it is cooked it's going to be looking something like this it is so delicious that yogurt just gives it that creamy you can slice it into well i did four pieces just depending on how many days you're prepping for um, and then you can place it into your tupperware or you can just keep it whole it just depends if you're working from home or if you know that you want to take it on the go so if you're prepping these berry and apple chia seed pots as well as the frittata you can definitely do this whilst the frittata is in the oven so i like to grab a big bowl and place in my chia seed before placing in my milk of choice which is usually 95% of the time like an almond milk. I then place my yogurt of choice in. It is usually a coconut yogurt. Sometimes it's a Greek yogurt but these days it has been coconut yogurt. Followed on by some cinnamon, some vanilla extract. It makes all the difference. Need some vanilla extract in there and I like to add in some goji berries. Sometimes I add raisins, sometimes I add pumpkin seeds but for today I'm adding in some goji berries. 
seeds. You can work it any way you want though. So I just stir everything and you know that chia seeds are gonna thicken up. You might think, oh my God, I poured in too much milk, but no, that milk's gonna get soaked up. These chia seeds are going to expand. I just let it sit aside for a couple of minutes, let the chia seeds expand. If I need to add more yogurt or a little bit more milk just to reach my desired consistency, I go ahead and do that. A layer of cooked fruit in these chia pots just take it to a whole new level. So I love adding in some apple or some berries or a combination of both, which I'm gonna be doing today. So I just chopped up some apples and I place them into a pan, really simple, place them into a pan, followed on by some cinnamon. I just throw cinnamon on everything possible. You can throw in a little splash of water or you can use a little bit of coconut oil, whatever you prefer. I used water and I placed in my blueberries, just cooking everything down for a few minutes until the fruit has softened. So the fruit is good to go once those apples have properly softened and those berries have just exploded and they're juicy and mm, you'll be ready to put these fruits into these pots. I'm actually gonna list the pots that I, that I grabbed. Um, they're really, really handy pots that I love. So I placed in those cooked apples and berries before placing on top that chia seed mixture. These chia seed pots are a lifesaver. I have been loving on these for like the last six months. I always have this for sure prepped in my fridge. Sometimes if I'm rushing to the gym and I need something beforehand, these are great. Or even sometimes after the gym, I just love to carry one in my bag. You can top these pots with some nut butter. You can use cashew butter. You can use almond butter, whatever you fancy. I just love that little extra touch. And yeah, time to put these aside and move on to our lunch, which is this chicken and butternut squash feta quinoa. Really, really tasty one right here. Let's get into it. If you're choosing to cook your quinoa from dried and you soaked it earlier, you can grab it, give it a good wash and rinse, and then place some fresh water over it and put it to cook. So again, if you pre-seasoned your chicken, then you can grab your chicken. I grabbed a pan and I just kind of like browned it on the outside before placing it into to a 180 degree oven and I left it in there for about 25 minutes. Obviously the cook time will vary depending on the size of your chicken breast if you're using breast or if you're using chicken thighs so just keep an eye on it you don't want it to dry out. So once the quinoa is cooked you can combine everything in a large bowl so you can place in the cooked quinoa, the cooked butternut squash, some cooked chickpeas. I placed in some jarred roasted red peppers. This is completely optional. I just thought it would be a nice addition for this quinoa butternut squash and feta salad. I placed over lots and lots of fresh parsley along with some olive oil, lemon juice, salt, pepper, and then I crumbled in that feta. I placed over some oregano, a little bit more extra virgin olive oil and just mixed everything well. I love this combination. So simple, so delicious. So go ahead and box up your lunch. So that butternut squash and feta quinoa, along with that chicken, added in some extra rocket, otherwise known as arugula, um, but that's totally optional. This will forever be one of my go-to preppable lunch ideas. It holds really well. In fact, the flavor just gets better over time. Like I said at the beginning, I would prefer to use chicken thighs just didn't find any chicken thighs in the store when I went shopping um, but that would definitely be my first option just because for me chicken thighs are just superior. <laughs> Satiating filling and absolutely delicious this is an ideal lunch prep that will hold well for a few days perfect for on the go or even if you're working from home I know you're going to love this one as much as I do. So we're going to prep our dinner this is a red lentil coconut pot we're going to serve it with some brown rice and some green beans. I love using red lentils especially when I'm short for time because you can just cook them straight away there's no soaking that's needed so we're just going to wash our red lentils wash them really well until the water runs clear so we're going to put our red lentils to cook i placed in some turmeric and some salt so continue by chopping up your onion your garlic cloves and your ginger so option to use some oil, I like to use ghee in a dish like this. I just love the taste of ghee. So I added some ghee to a low to medium pan and I threw in all of my spice seeds, just letting them toast. Spice seeds that I used include mustard seeds, cumin seeds, fennel seeds, some cardamom pods that I just crushed. And I just toasted the spices for about a minute, a minute and a half. You definitely don't want to burn them. So make sure everything is kind of like on a low heat. 
So place in your onions, garlic and ginger and just start stirring everything. You want to unlock, release all of those flavors and then you want to place in some salt and some pepper. I threw in some extra chopped chili but that is completely optional. I also added in some curry leaves before throwing in my tinned tomatoes. If you're using fresh tomatoes, brilliant but I'm using tin today. I then threw in all of my spice powders including turmeric, garam masala and some curry powder. Once the lentils were softened and cooked, I threw them into the pan with those cooked down tomatoes and I poured over some coconut milk, just mixing everything well. This red lentil coconut pot is instantly delicious. It will get better over time. If you want, you can go ahead and add in some fresh coriander. I would highly recommend you do that if you are a fan of coriander or cilantro, whatever you want to call it. I wanted some type of vegetable. I had these green beans in the freezer, so I just simply steam them. You know I love my steaming trays. My steaming trays get most use in my kitchen. I could not be without them. Once they were steamed and brightened and green, I just placed over some salt, some olive oil, that's it. And then I just served my dinner up. So I cooked some brown rice to go with it. Um, you could pair it with some sweet potato. You could pair it with rice as I have. Maybe you wanna pair it with another grain. Maybe you wanna pair it with some extra protein. So you could maybe pair it with a piece of salmon. These are all just suggestions in ways that you could work this recipe. So yeah, I served it up with the brown rice, added in the red lentils, followed on by those steamed green beans, threw over some extra coriander, a slice of lemon, and yeah, this is the final meal prep. I feel like dinner's that one that catches most people out, and you know, it's that moment when you're like feeling tired, you're like, I can't bother to cook, I don't wanna chop, but imagine having something like this in your fridge, prepped, ready to go. Um, just another option from ordering Uber Eats. Oh, there's nothing wrong with Uber Eats or Deliveroo, but um, if it's like a regular thing for you and you really kind of just want to break that habit, then maybe trying something like this as a prepped meal would be of real use and value to you. So here is my balanced, healthy, nourishing four day meal prep. We are not restricting any food groups. We're welcoming, celebrating all foods. Obviously you can make tweaks if you don't eat certain foods, that's absolutely fine. But I wanted to give you an example of a well-rounded meal prep, food that you're deeply going to love, that you're going to enjoy. Um, and yeah, I really hope you do enjoy it. If you try them out, let me know. Um, drop me a comment if you have anything to ask me, anything to say. I would love to hear if you wanna see more of this style of content, let me know. Everybody take care. I will see you in my next video very, very soon. Bye.